Hello and welcome back to JST. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Mariana and I try and bring you videos about Japan and travel mostly and anthropology. Today I would love to talk to you about religion in Japan again and in particular a notion which is called Kegare, which is possibly one of the most complex topic in all the Japanese culture. I apologize for the lights because today is a horrible day in Turin, it's rainy, it's grey, it's dark and I had to arrange some kind of light settings as if you can see there is a very big shadow behind me. Kegare is a notion that is often translated in English but also in Italian and in other uh, European languages as impurity, so something that it's not clean, not pure and that uh, therefore is a, f is a source of pollution. And in anthropological studies and in uh, cultural anthropology, notions such as purity, uh, impurity, pollutions are very important elements with social implications that, that of course go beyond the simple idea of uh, dirty and clean or uh, any concern about let's say, health or hygiene. They imply a complex relationship between different actors within a given society. So impurity is variously interpreted as dangerous, as a sign of divine rage, as a break into the social order, and as a violation of corporal boundaries, as the proof of uncertainty and a threat against uh, the community. So Japan is no exception and the notion of kegare is a very complex one and implies lots of different connection with the other notion of purity, impurity, borders, society, structures and so on. Kegare is clearly one of the most important elements in the Japanese uh, ideological and ritual universe because the elimination of impurity, so the protection of a state of purity, is the central element of majority of Shinto rituals, so of lots of religious rituals in Japan. Often the world is connected to other words such as kitanashi, oe, aka, nigosu, kurashi. Uh, these are all words that in Japanese represent dirty, uh, impure, sometimes even evil um, characteristics. Studies about kegare are wide, difficult, uh, complex and it seems that no one achieved a, a, a actual certainty about the meaning of the word and how to properly employ it or translate it in other languages. A lot of studies begin their analysis from an etymological point of view. So there is one possible derivation that is kega, which is wound, so again the, the notion of suffering, of blood, of something that breaks the human body. One of the most interesting analyses is that of folklore studies that try and see um, kegare as a compound of ke and kare with the nouns I will try to uh, make the kanji scroll somehow here with usually the first one meaning energy, life energy and kare has the verb uh, fading so usually one of the most important used meaning is that of vanishing of a life force. Sakurai Tokutaro, for example, is one of the most renowned uh, researchers and scholars that used this, this specific interpretation, so described Kegare as the vanishing of life, of life energy, life energy which he intended as sacred, as the sacred power. Kegare is the disappearing of such a sacred power. Other anthropologists such as Namihira Eniko propose a very interesting analysis of the topic and consider an interesting relation between hare, ke e kegare. So this is like a triangle in which each of these three elements interact one with the other. We begin with hare, which is the sacred, the pure, and ke, that is the profane and the ordinary element. Finally, kegare is the impure element. Kegare is the ontological opposite to hare. Hare emerges in order to eliminate kegare. There are lots of similar analyses that begin with the etymological point of view, but they are very long and I 
will suggest some of them in the comment section below. Kegere has been analyzed also in connection with uh, the ancient mythology. For example, if you consider Kegere in connection with the ancient text, the notion of impurity is not that clear, but Kegere seems to represent the power of the kami, so something that is beyond human control, something that is dangerous because it's powerful and something that cannot be restrained by human action. So this first interpretation seems to read Kegare as something not dirty or negative per se, but as something that is more powerful than human beings, so it's the nature in its most extreme uh, powerful manifestation, and therefore it represents the power of the kami. A second interpretation that is very interesting from the point of view of cultural anthropologists is that kegare represents any kind of power that endangers the social order, the established social order. So it's like an external an external element, something that comes from outside and can somehow disrupt the social structure as it's known. Does Kegare become the synonymous of dangerous, of something that eludes any categorization because is outsider and so it's difficult to put inside the already given structure. This may explain also why Kegare is in Japan usually associated mainly with death, birth and menstruation. These three elements, how to say, represents three moments of alterity, something different that comes from somehow from outside. Menstruation is a symbol of womanhood, which is the other par excellence uh, in any male-dominated culture. Death is something that disrupts the order because a member of society dies and so disappear, while birth, even if in a more joyous way, is again a disruptive element, a disruptive event in society. So this, it's clear that these three moments uh, become very significant in the idea of diversity. A similar analysis is possible if you connect Kegare with a more political dimension. So, for example, in the ancient Japanese history, the emperor and the court and whoever revolved around the court was pure, while the more you... I'm sorry. The more you move from the center, the more dirty and impure the world gets. This is a clear political sign, because the more you move toward the outside, the less the imperial court had power on those people, so they were, again, they were outside the imperial control, they were a power from beyond, a power from a different world, somehow. They were dangerous, they threatened to disrupt the inner order. Of course, the debate on Kegare is wide and it's extremely interesting from my point of view, but it's clearly not very easy, mainly because it implies a different, a different interpretation of some elements such as death and life and birth, and so sometimes it's hard to clearly translate that element. Yeah, yeah, you like it. It's very hard to translate those elements that belongs to a different culture within our mindset. A final thought that for me was always very interesting is the idea that Kegare is the perfect representation of any transitional state. So for example, the dead body, the corpse, is it's Kegare because it still represents a human being. So it seems alive, but it's not, and it's transitioning towards the skeleton. The transition between the living body and the skeleton is impure because it's confusing, it's difficult to put that thing in one category or the other. So I would say that uh, probably one of the most interesting way to express Kegare is the idea that it represents everything that it's a disorder. So it's, it's not possible to locate in a specific box. It's a moment of confusion in a very wide sense. And this is very interesting because it also opened the possibility to talk about life, death, and womanhood and gender in very different ways and in a very interesting way from an anthropological point of view. So thanks for watching this video. I know it might have been a little complex because it's very difficult to talk about Kekere in a very clear way. Anyhow, there will be some references written in the comment section. <laughs> So you may be able to read a little bit more if you're interested and to see if you find it funny uh, or at least worth reading. I will also put the reference to an amazing book by Mary Douglas, which is one of the most renowned anthropologists that you have to remember while you talk about purity and danger, because she wrote one of 
most amazing books about this. The title is Purity and Danger and she offered one of the first interpretation of impurity and sacredness and the fact that impurity is a way to conceptualize disorder. So that being said, I want to thank you very much for listening to me today. If you like the video, <sighs> thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do it because it's very nice and again because I'm really trying to offer you a lot of different video and different takes on Japanese culture and especially religion. And I talk to you soon. Bye!